In this video, I want to show you how to use a technique I find super helpful as an executive assistant to the CEO. This is a great technique for remote workers looking after an executive, virtual assistants, time poor executives that can't meet up with you all the time, but may be able to answer an email in between tasks or meetings, traveling executives, the technique I'm talking about is the questions and update email that has worked for me for many years. I use it when my executive is traveling in lieu of our morning catch up when he isn't traveling. I created this technique out of necessity. At the time I created it, I was working as an executive assistant for a managing director who traveled to different states each week. When he was working in the state I lived in, we could catch up face to face. But when he was in other states, it was much harder and there was no Zoom calls back then. He also wasn't tech savvy and still operated with a physical diary. So unless I could see his diary, then I didn't know when his meetings were and with whom. So in the questions and update email, I would ask what he had in his diary for the next day or so. When I did see his diary, or he updated me via email in regards to his schedule, I then updated his Outlook calendar to reflect what meetings were coming up. The other reason for creating this email was because sending individual emails for different questions would get lost in his inbox. In fact, too many emails are distracting and get lost in anybody's inbox. So I decided to put everything in one email so he could respond to everything I was asking in one go. And that email also included updates that I wanted to bring to his attention. Fast forward 10 years, I still use this method. And like I stated earlier, I now use it when my executive is traveling. Let me tell you how it works. When my manager is traveling, I create a draft questions and update email for the day and I collate any questions and updates that have come into his inbox or questions that other people have asked me to relay to my executive, and I add it to that draft email. I then send my executive the questions and update email from the day before at 10 a.m. the next day. But before I do, I go through his inbox to see what came in the night before and add to that email before I send it. However, you can email the questions and update email just before you leave work for the day. Do what works for both you and your executive. Now, if a matter is important and needs his attention urgently, I will text him and ask him to call me when he is free. So this is what the email looks like. I add the subject matter, which is questions and updates, and I also add the date. I add two headings in the body of the email. The first heading is questions. I number every single question instead of using bullet points. And the reason I do that is because when my executive responds, he only needs to add the number of the question and then add his reply against that number. So I know exactly what question he is referring to. Sometimes my executive doesn't answer all the questions in the email because he may need to look into that question or it's too difficult to explain via email. So he will tell me that he will call me about that question later. And if he doesn't call me in regards to that question, I will add a friendly reminder to the next questions and update email that goes out. Second heading is update. I don't need to number these updates. I can just add bullet points because I'm not asking for a response. I am only bringing these updates to his attention. The other thing I do in this email is I highlight certain words. So if he is just scanning through this email, the highlighted words will grab his attention and tell a story. For instance, in this email, if you just read the words in bold letters, it gives a brief explanation of what I want him to do. Here are a few examples. I will first read the sentence in full and then read only the words in bold and you will see it tells the same story. Mary Ann from Shelton House has finally got back to me regarding a catch up with both you and Tony and is asking what's the scope of the meeting. However, if you just read the bold words, then it reads Mary Ann from Shelton House is asking what's the scope of the meeting. And for the next one, I will just read the words in bold. 
Move lunch with Michael Taylor from the 13th to the 20th of July. However, on the 20th of July, you have pipeline meeting ends at 12, lunch with Michelle at 12.30, another pipeline meeting at 2 p.m. Did you want me to move all the meetings from A to C or see if Michael can do another day? Under the update heading, I do the same. So if he just reads the words that are in bold, then he can get the gist of what I'm trying to tell him. As you can see, there are no numbers besides the updates, only bullet points. If you wanted to go with numbers, then I would suggest not to start from number one, but start with the number after the last number you used in the questions section. This technique has really been a great tool to have for me. I would love for you to try it and let me know if it works for you. I hope you have found this video informative and helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks for watching.